Hello and welcome to the Galway Races for day five. And for tips from the track, I'm Noel Hayes from the Tote.com and this is David Jennings from the Racing Post. And we hope to give you a few pointers to help you pick a few winners for day five here at the Galway Races. But before we start, just a quick mention of our Tote guarantees for today. We have a €100,000 pick six guarantee, €30,000 jackpot guarantee and a €30,000 place spot guarantee. But on to the action. The first race is a handicap hurdle and I think it's probably defined by those horses who just failed to make the cut for the Guinness Galway hurdle. It's a tricky little contest. David, what do you think it is? Yeah, very tricky start to the card. I think the, the, the first races each day have been very, very tough and I don't, I'm not sure our favourite has won the first race any day so punters will be hoping to get off to a good start on the Friday. New crowd coming in, there's a lot of people that just come for the weekend. Uh, the horse I'm willing to give one last chance, I'm going to follow it over a cliff, is Maxim Gorky of Noel Meads. I suppose it's it, it, it's just his horse are coming back into a little bit of form. We've seen Road to Riches. It's the same combination, obviously, as the Galway Plate, uh, Shane Shortall and Noel Mead. And I'm convinced this horse is really well handicapped. He hasn't produced it. He's let me down so many times. But he's off 1-2-3. I talked to Noel last year, and he thought he thought he was a fair bit better than that, Mark. He thought he was one of his best handicapped horses in the yard. You know, hopefully if they go a good, a good clip, he should get into a nice rhythm. He's ran well at this track before at the at the we're meeting here, so um, one final chance for Maxim Gorky, you know. That's what optimism looks like, folks. This is the same sort of optimism that makes David think that Mead could win in all Ireland in the next 10 years. But anyhow, in the first race, I actually like Indian icon myself, Desi Uses horse. Just failed to get into the hurdle. Um, four year old gets a few allowances, but has been running himself into form and comes here in the back of two victories. On to the second race, David. Flat Maiden. Tricky looking contest. And when you have a tricky look at contest at Galway, the best thing to do is stick to what you know. And Dermot Weld, um, I fancy Bell CL at Rouge here. Um, I was in Bellia Town um, working the, the, when this, this horse met its debut. Thought it ran a really, really nice race against Ice Echo. Bellia Town is a very strange place to bring a newcomer because the undulations of the track, they're over roads. It's a real, real tricky place. And I said in my analysis, I've never seen a horse, a newcomer, handle the track so well. It was like as if it was on its tent run. It was beating a, a, a nose by Ice Echo that day. And it was very funny Lee Roach rode it that day and was walking back in and I said did you think you were up he says I want to have a look at that print he could not believe the result it was one of these photo finishes I think I think that uh, Ice Echo could have been back at a much bigger price after the race than before it um, but I just thought it, it, it glided through the race I'd imagine it'll come on a good bit for that run and uh, it'd be Bell Ciel at Rouge for me no going to oppose David here I'm going for David Watchman's in the JP McManus fit for the job uh, ran a cracker on debut over six furlongs and dropped back a half a furlong and probably just was found wanting a little bit but steps up to date to seven furlongs and I think that can make all the difference so fit for the job for me on to the third race it's the uh, Galway Blazers handicap chase always a very interesting race David again probably categorised by horses who just maybe failed to make the cut for the Galway play but what do you, th what do you think here Dave? Yeah I just thought Rivage Door ran a really nice race in the Midlands National um, obviously Kilbeg and a similar type of track to here in many ways you know right handers and the fences come at you ticket fast at various par parts of the track thought it ran a really nice race that day I thought even it was a, it was a type of horse I thought that if it did sneak into the plate it might have a little bit of a chance because it tends to jump well and has a little bit of touch of class was a, was a nice novice hurdler a few years ago and um, Kevin Sexton takes off five pounds and I said before this week getting claimers around here is very very important and Kevin for his five pound is as good as anybody so um, Rivage Door um, you know I think it could be an each way of price too and I'd be very disappointed if you finished out in the first four very good I like the number one horse there, usual Smurfer. He was a reserve for the plate yesterday, but just didn't uh, make the cut. Um, I think his only Achilles heel is his jumping, but I think he could be well treated uh, if, he, if he manages to jump around proficiently around Galway. One of the big pluses is that it's so far from the last fence to the line, so even if he you know, can get into a rhythm after the last, he can stay onto the line. Fourth race, David. It's the mile and a half Guinness handicap to feature race of the day. Uh, what do you like in this? I think this is very interesting. Um, Showcourt was third to Curly Bill in the race last year off a of mark in 90. Somehow has managed to get dropped three pounds down to 87. This looks like this has been the plan for 364 mm. days for Showcourt. Uh, you know, it's probably not as good a race as it was last year. Just looking through, there's a lot of ifs and buts about horses. You've obviously got improvers like Panama Hat, but um, I'd say Showcourt is probably a fair bit better than his handicap mark at the minute. That three pound is going to be crucial. Um, you know, it, it, it just looks as if he has the experience of running the race. Um, and I just think if he gets into a nice position early, stays very strongly, uh, Pat's Mullen aboard, I, I think Showcourt will win. Noel, I think he's probably the best, the best bet on the card on Friday. I like how David's sentiments there. I think Showcourt, uh, amazingly, as you say, three pounds lower than his mark from last year. Had a nice prep run over a shorter distance and comes here, I think, carrying a good bit of confidence. 
The next race, David, uh, Maiden, Flat Maiden, um, I think something unusual here insofar as that we're both opposing Dermot Weld. Yeah, yeah, I suppose, um, in a, especially in Maidens round here, he seems to have a strong hand all the time, but I thought Awesome Star, real nice race at the Curra, really, really eye-catching. Um, the form of that has worked out quite well with the Aidan O'Brien horse that was well beaten that day, Annas Barabalus has come out and won since, um, ran okay the other day actually in a race here as well, but uh, I just thought um, it, it looked like it was getting there, getting there all the time in the home straight at the Curra, just didn't do anything too much in a hurry, just think it'd be much more streetwise this time and um, it's not the greatest maiden in the world the, probably the Dermot Weld horse in it is certainly worth taking on I don't think that form is anything to write home about and uh, I think this could be a John Ox and Declan McDonough winner I'll go with David there. I think the big key for this horse is that he's stepping up an extra two furlongs. He was a huge eye catcher in debut, and the extra two furlongs here will be a massive plus for him. The next uh, race, David, is one of those uh, seven furlong or mile handicaps that we see here every other day. And of course, it's Friday now, so we're seeing horses that ran against each other earlier in the week. And uh, you mentioned something about a cliff there earlier on. Do you want to talk to us again about that? Yeah, yeah. If I didn't fall over the cliff earlier on the card with Maxim Gorky, I'll certainly be falling it over it here with uh, Botanical Lady. Uh, look, we, we we seen on uh, earlier in the week Botanical Lady really fancied it from the first night. Uh, just got into, you know, just didn't get there. Um, obviously, it's drawn out wide and in very wide draw this time, but I don't think it's going to matter that much because it's obviously going to be held up out the back and we'll need an awful lot of luck in running, but I'm due an awful lot of luck this week, so I'm hoping that the luck will come through and Botanical Lady will strike for Harry Rogers. I'm going to go against Botanical Lady, even though we were both with her earlier in the week, and I'm going to go for the horse that beat her earlier in the week, expensive taste from Andy Oliver. I think it can confirm the form and uh, win for its second time this week. <coughs> the last race, David, um, a mile and six can Conditions race, I think it's best to describe it. Um, to talk earlier in the week that Forgotten Rules was going to run in yesterday's qualified rider maiden, and Robbie McNamara would ride it. Obviously, we saw White go on, went on and won that quite impressively, and they've diverted Forgotten Rules to this race. Um, looks like it's going to start favourite, even in a tough race. But I think it'll take a lot of beating. Yeah, I think I think uh, probably Robbie McNamara and uh, Pat Smullen have had a little bit of fighting over which race this horse is going to run, and Pat Smullen seems to got his way. This is potentially one of the best horses we've seen this week. Um, Forgotten Rules. It was all the rage. All the talk was about. Forgotten gotten rules before it's made its debut a punch then I don't know about you Noel I've never seen a more impressive winner of, of, of a bumper in it probably maybe in Ireland in the last couple of years this was uh, the race was over on the home turn and Robbie was absolutely sitting up uh, supposedly it does handstands at home this is probably the most uh, under national hunt rules anyway the most promising horse that Dermot has in his yard and it's interesting that he brings him to Galway uh, you know it's a good race you've got the likes of Shoe Lewis in it and on, and on ratings he's an awful lot to do but he just has that touch of class and he could absolutely blitz this field and Hopefully it'll send punters home happy. Yeah, for, for all those reasons, it's a race to watch with, with a lot of interest because Forgotten Rules comes here with a phenomenal reputation. And I think if he would happen to win tomorrow evening, people will be talking about Supreme Novice Hurdle and Cheltenham next March, yeah. which is early in the year to be talking about it, but that won't stop them. Anyhow, that's it from day five here in Galway and tips from the track. We'd like to wish you the very best. Look, we hope we've guided you towards a few winners. Thanks and enjoy your punting.